Now, despite the escalating war between Israel and Hamas, neighboring countries Egypt and Jordan have ruled out accepting refugees from the conflict. And a bombshell new report using a case study from Denmark, just released by Nigel Farage on his GB News show, shows that the Prime Minister may be best advised to do the same. Have a watch of this. In 1992, Denmark gave refuge to 321 Palestinians. By 2019, the government produced results for what had happened to them. 64% of those that had been given refuge had obtained criminal records. 34% of their children had obtained criminal records. And bear in mind, many of the children hadn't yet grown up. And the vast majority were living on welfare. That particular influx of refugees that went in to Denmark proved to be a mistake and a complete disaster. Right, well, there we go. So to discuss these shocking figures, I am now joined by Danish MEP, Peter Govel. Peter, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. So we've heard here uh, Hamza Youssef, our, our leader in Scotland, say that we should take in a load of Palestinian refugees. What would you say to that based on the Danish experience? Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, I would say no, no, no. That would be completely insane. I mean, just look into the Danish statistics. It's all public. You can go to Google. You can see the numbers. It has been a completely disaster in Denmark. And I believe the politicians back then made the worst investment ever for the Danish future. OK. Um, I mean, why? You know, what, 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 what happened? I mean, what was, what was the thing? Because, you know, look, let's be honest. I mean, you know, loads of Danish people, I imagine, will commit crime as well. It's, crime is not just the preserve of, you know, um, Palestinians, is it? So what, what was so especially bad? Well, if you compare these group of people to uh, the Danish citizens, you would see that they are way more criminals than uh, the Danish population in general, first of all. But the thing is, those people were not even real refugees. I mean, when they, uh, many of them were granted asylum seeking, they, they decided to go back to their own country to celebrate. Uh, so it's not even real refugees as we know them. So I would, I would very much advise you to stop taking those people. Uh, it, will, it will give you problems for generations, honestly. So, so just say that to me again. So you granted asylum to a load of Palestinian refugees who then went back to Gaza to celebrate. To celebrate. And then came back to Denmark. Yes. Right. Yes. That possibly should have set alarm bells ringing, uh, I suppose. But was there yeah, a big push? Was, there a, was so. there a big push from the Danish public? You know, people who thought they were doing a nice thing, people who thought they were doing the right thing initially. Presumably you were under a lot of pressure. Uh, well, um, this was a case where the government, the authorities were under huge pressure from a party called the Radical Left and the Socialistic yeah. People's Party. So imagine, imagine the debate back then in the 90s. If you warned against these people, if you said, well, they could be way more criminal than a regular Danish person, you would be called a racist. You might even have lost your job. So mm -hmm. it was quite difficult back then. But today, I, I believe that not even the Social Democrats would do anything as stupid as back in the 90s. Well, you'd be surprised because we have a chap in charge of the Scottish National Party who is very keen to do exactly that by the sounds of things. Let me just ask this, Peter, to you and say, hey, you know, maybe this was down to uh, the, the, the poor socioeconomic circumstances of them moving to Denmark, that they had to resort to crime in order to, to pay their way. They weren't given opportunities. It was an inevitability. No, I would say right. that Denmark is a Scandinavian welfare state that will feed everybody coming here so if you if you if you are not able to have success under these circumstances you would never you would never have success anywhere in the world so this is a complete social state taking care of feeding everybody here so there is absolutely no reason to commit art crimes as some of those people did a lot okay. of them actually uh OK, fair enough. Look, Peter, uh, thank you very much. And, and can I just ask as well, any plans to take any refugees from the current conflict taking place over there? No, no plans. Right. OK, Peter, thank you very much. It's Peter Koffel there, who is uh, a Danish MEP. I really appreciate you coming on, Peter. It's great to uh, ha have your input.